Hey guys, DPG here, David Patrick Green from HackHollywood.com with another amazing video. Uh, if you guys would do me the uh, service of please uh, liking this, like, subscribe, and click the bell for notifications. I'd appreciate it. And any questions, comments, or suggestions that come out of this, please put them in the comment section below. So this is a really great video today. I'm going to talk about why it's really important not to really listen to other people um, when trying to figure out what to do with your acting career and really just come up with ideas for yourself that apply to yourself and um, just go out and try them and see what happens because I tell you almost every single time I do this it works out almost perfectly and that's because probably nobody else is doing it and I don't know, maybe it just seems to make sense, right? So I'm going to give you three examples of how I or my clients have done this in the past and uh, how, uh, how it all turned out. So first example is my own. And this, uh, this goes, goes quite a ways back when I literally had first graduated from an acting academy, uh, did a two-year program, you know, it was what it was, but of course, when you graduate something like this, you think you're all that in a bag of chips. And so I proceeded to go back to my hometown and I just decided, uh, you know, I needed an agent to, uh, you know, to make this happen because I didn't know any better. Little did I know, right? But anyway, I, I decided, okay, so it's the dead of winter and there's a snowstorm, not to mention it's in the middle of the SARS epidemic, okay? So every production company had basically decided to pull out of Toronto at the time. And yet I thought, well, look, all of this may or may not be true, but what am I gonna do about it? I can't change the SARS epidemic. I can't change anything. I could have left town and gone back to LA or New York or whatever, but I'm like, you know what? Let's see what happens. Naivete and innocence is really your strength, right? If you don't know, people don't tell you what not to do. You just do what seems to make sense. So I got a bunch of headshots together, never was ha happy with them. And I literally trudged around uh, the city of Toronto. I mapped out where all the agents were located and I, uh, I mapped it out, kind of tried to make uh, a little walking path that was going to be as short as possible. And I just went into every office and I said, hi, my name is David Patrick Green. I just came up. So like, this is where, this is where I got creative and it really helped me is I said, hey, I just graduated from this uh, acting school. I've done all of these you know, films there, independent films, uh, student films. I just tried to make it sound as good as possible, right? And rather than diminish my position, I tried to strengthen it. I didn't know how it would turn out. Look, you know, I, I had never even done a professional audition, I don't think, at that point. Uh, so I didn't know how it would turn out. But uh, I just went to all these offices and... I couldn't believe, like, I really just wanted to let them see my face and uh, let them get a, you know, get a, a look at me. And, and I could get a feel for them, whether I thought this was a good office, a strong office, right? All this information is changing hands. And I was just planning on uh, dropping off a headshot, and that way they, they had a, a real face to the face on the picture. But as it turned out, I would just talk to the receptionist, and I would just say, hey, I didn't even know the names of the agents because it wasn't easy to come by then as maybe it is now. And I just, whoever was there, I introduced myself and had a little chat with them. I probably didn't because I was probably scared. You know, I would have had a much better chance now. Um, <laughs> and, and my chances were incredible then. So, uh, so I just had a little chat with them and I said, hey, I, I'm here uh, to introduce myself. I just arrived from LA, blah, 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 blah. I gave them, you know, some basic facts. And I just thought I would see if uh, you might be interested in talking further or something to that effect. Would you mind, uh, you know, if the agent wasn't right there in front of me, then, uh, you know, I would ask if they wouldn't mind getting them. And, you know, I, 
I couldn't believe how often they would go talk to the agent and the agent would come out and introduce themselves. And I think using this single method, I had like, I can't even remember, four or five offers of representation. I even had, re like I had um, representation offers from literally the top agencies in the entire city of uh, Toronto. I ended up deciding to go with one, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But I had no idea how it would turn out. It just seemed like it would make sense. And so I did it and it worked out amazingly well. So I suggest that that's a great example for you guys. Um, second one is involving one of my clients and uh, he wanted to he really wanted to get into this uh, TV show, The Expanse. And so what he did is he kept track of, you know, any appearances that the cast was going to have. And so he saw that they were gonna be at some sci-fi convention. So we talked about what he might or might not do, how, you know, what to do. But anyway, he just went there to this convention and there was this big gathering because the show had been dropped by their prior network and uh, I believe people are trying to to get uh, Amazon to do it and pick it up so there was this sort of gathering and Jeff Bezos takes the stage and the cast is there and he you know he announces the presence of the cast and makes this big announcement that they're going to uh, pick up Amaz uh, pick up the expanse for season four and everyone goes nuts and you know Jason's totally psyched about it as well and he then after it's all over sees Jeff Bezos exiting uh, the building and he runs after him or walks after him probably didn't want to run after him but he walks over and he says hey Jeff, how you doing? And, uh, you know, he stands out. He's a tall guy, and he had just been in the movie Rampage. But he said to him, uh, hey, Jeff, uh, how's it going? My name's Jason. I was in the movie Rampage. And he had seen that Jeff Bezos had a picture of himself in front of the gorilla, in front of the poster for Rampage. And he said, hey, I, I, I noticed you had a picture there, blah, blah, blah. They had like a five-minute chat. And he said, look, uh... You know, I'm 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 so happy you did this with uh, the Expanse. I really see myself as you know this type of character or what have you. And Jeff just said, "Oh well, great, call call casting, and you know bring yourself in for an interview." So he did that. He called up the casting office. It was actually very hard to get a hold of them because there wasn't any numbers, but I said, you know, if you can't find the number, then show up at their doorstep. Like, you know, an address for Amazon Studios, go there. So he did, he just went there and he introduced himself and he told them the story that I just told you, that uh, Jeff Bezos had sent him over there to, uh, you know, to be interviewed. And he got an appointment with all three of the heads of casting at Amazon Studios. And he sat with them for like a half an hour and they had a great time and they said, Anytime you need any, you know, ref reference, referral, because they were just, you know, wowed by him, they really liked him, uh, you just tell them to call us, okay? How great is that? Okay, and then my third example is a client I had in uh, Vancouver, and he had left the business for a while. He had, uh, you know, done some sort of production directing type of work, but he wanted to get back in, and I said, okay, well, Seeing you have, you know, some abilities, maybe you can offer your services up, maybe on a voluntary basis or what have you. Uh, and he said, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. And then he found out that all of the production offices in Vancouver require you to be a part of IATSE. And he wasn't in IATSE. And so rather than just, you know, giving up, because everyone else would just say, oh, well, that's too bad. You know, I guess that's not going to work out. I was like, well, let's figure out how to change that. So I said, 
Well, if the union is the thing that's keeping you out, guess who you need to talk to? <laughs> and he's like, I don't know. And I'm like, come on, man. He's like, the union? And I said, yes, you are going to go to the union office, introduce yourself, be charming, be funny, be friendly, be helpful. And you're going to find out how you can translate what their requirements are uh, to join the union uh, into, you're going to convert what you have to offer into something that will uh, convert to membership in the union. And so he made a contact there who was really nice and helpful and he basically kept in touch with her and he said this is what I've done and he kept tweaking his resume and changing it and she would give him feedback and and she's like you know you really are qualified to do some things like you could be a production assistant or what have you and so then I said you know what you need to do now is go visit all of the production offices and tell them you want to be a production assistant and tell them what your qualifications are and again create demand for yourself so that the union is then encouraged to let you in okay so there are job postings right but a job posting is meaningless compared to somebody who's saying I want to hire you okay so I said okay go to these production offices introduce yourself find out what positions are available and then when they say, oh yeah, that sounds great, we'd like to hire you, you say, well, I'm not in the union and I don't know how, and then they say, oh, let me make a call. And they call the union, and the union doesn't want to prevent people from working. And if somebody really wants to hire you, they're gonna probably try and make it happen. It's similar to being Taft Hartlead as a union actor in the United States, right? They have to make an exception but they try to make the exception if it's possible because you're you're a unique person every actor is unique so it's it's never really a stretch it's not like anybody can just replace you that easily so anyway he um these he went to these production offices and they all said oh okay yeah like a couple of them said they'd be interested in hiring him and and so then he um got back in touch with the union and they're like oh you have interest oh okay you know, uh, well, you know, if you get an actual job offer, we'll see what we can do. And what he did is he got himself an actual job offer. And so he went back to the union and they said, yeah, we'll approve this. And he got his first, uh, I don't know what they call it, a certificate or, you know, whatever stamp of approval, because you have to have a few of them. Um, and, uh, and, and then he got his first PA job, at which point, of course, the rest is sort of history and is continuing history because now he knows producers and directors and all kinds of people in the business. And he's also working on his acting skills as we speak. So he uh, really feels super, super positive about his prospects. And what, what I demonstrated to myself and all these people and what they've demonstrated to themselves is they have the power, they have the control, but it's also their responsibility to do this kind of stuff and take action. And don't, don't look at some article and say, oh, this is how things are done. The way things are done is how they are done, meaning whatever you do is how things are done. And if you follow this process, these these step by step approach, um, I can almost guarantee you, you'll have incredible success. Yeah, sure, you'll have missteps along the way, but that's kind of the fun of it. Is when things screw up and you're like, oh my gosh, I just got, you know, I just got lambasted, whitewashed, blackballed, whatever, and how am I going to pull myself out of this? And it's kind of fun because you always know that it doesn't matter what anybody does to you; it only lasts that long. And then you just pick yourself up and go, okay, what's the next thing I'm going to do? Anyway, guys, I'm walking into a windstorm, so I'm just going to leave it there. So let me know what you guys think of this video. Comments, suggestions, questions in the comment section below. Thanks a lot, and I will catch you on the next one.